Cabrini Green has long held a troubled history, notorious for its gang violence, drug abuse, and crime from even before there was Cabrini Green. But many times, because of that stigma, the good aspects of Cabrini Green, such as the housing it provides and the community who live inside it, is often overshadowed by the bad aspects that have been brought on by various things such as poor funding, improper police protection, and overall dereliction of the area. Cabrini Green is a public housing development on the north side of Chicago. Cabrini Green was built upon the raised buildings of Little Sicily, also called Little Hell, which used to be an Italian slum. During World War II, Little Hell was demolished to build Cabrini Green, named after Francis Cabrini, the first American canonized by the Catholic Church. Cabrini Green was initially built to provide housing for the war workers. The first residents were poor Irish, Italians, Puerto Ricans, and African Americans, including the war workers. In 1942, the Francis Cabrini Row Houses were completed, with a total of 586 units within 54 buildings. In 1958, the Cabrini Homes extensions were built with an additional 1,925 units in 15 buildings. In 1962, the Green Homes are completed, adding an additional 1,096 units. The main issue that started Cabrini Green's downfall was after World War II. At that time, many people living in Cabrini Green were working in the factories for the war which was why Cabrini Green was made in the first place. But after the war, the factories shut down, laying off thousands of workers, many of whom lived in Cabrini Green. At the same time, Chicago was going through an economic recession. So in order to save money, public transportation funding was cut, maintenance funding was cut, and police patrols were cut. If a street light went out, it wasn't fixed until a few months later. Buildings weren't properly maintained, and the lack of police patrols allowed crime to flourish. Cabrini Green was, and still is, located next to the affluent Gold Coast neighborhood of Chicago. The location of Cabrini Green next to the Gold Coast made it a convenient place to purchase drugs for the nightlife on Rush Street, located a few blocks east of the housing project. Residents of Cabrini Green were trying to earn any bit of money they could because of the layoffs. Drug selling became a business in Cabrini Green for the vast majority of poor people who were jobless, and there was much competition in drug selling. Gangs formed in order for the business to survive. This caused an escalation in violence due to gang wars. The straw that broke the camel's back in this case, though, can be viewed when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. Wanda Hopkins, a resident of Cabrini Green at the time of the assassination, reflects back on that day. I remember when it was announced on TV and I was young, but people went crazy. There was a store across the street from us, they were just looting and throwing things. I think the story was called Grocery Land, and it was where the Winfield Moody Health Center is now. My mother was a very strong mother. She didn't play with that stuff, and she didn't let us out during that. Even among teenagers, the reaction to the news was instantaneous. Gloria Crite remembers what happened that day in her school. We had a riot in the school, and I was sitting there in the lunchroom at Walla when it happened. Oh, it was like out of the blue. The black students, they just started throwing the plates and food and stuff, and I escaped out a side window. And after that, there became a lot of anger. The riots became so terrible that the National Guard was called in. Thelma Randolph relates her experience with the National Guard. They were mad because they killed Dr. King. That's the only way I figured people were doing all this stuff. But it was more than that, because I remember the National Guards coming in. They came in and there was a curfew. Everybody had to be off the streets. When tanks was going through the streets, guys in army gear, and at night, big bright lights. 
when they hit your window, it would like light up your whole house. So it was kind of frightening, definitely. The whole thing was sad to me. It was sad to me. With little or no maintenance being given to the apartments at Cabrini Green due to budget cuts, the buildings were not fixed after the riots. Broken glass from shop windows filled the streets, random acts of vandalism were everywhere, and never were fixed. Cabrini Green would never recover from that day. Violence has been a hallmark of Cabrini Green. A man wishing to be known only as Johnny G describes life inside the projects well. The projects are where grandmothers put their grandkids to sleep in the bathtubs on weekends to protect them from the random rounds of gunfire. Murder has been so common in Cabrini Green that most murders aren't even reported. Some though have made front page news. Dantrell Davis is one of them. It was October 13, 1992. Seven-year-old Dantrell was walking with his mom to school one morning when a gang war broke out nearby. As a result, Dantrell was fatally shot by a stray bullet. His death really opened up the community's eyes to the violence and caused the gang truce, the first ever in Cabrini Green that lasted over three years. Starting in 2000, Cabrini Green started undergoing a 10-year plan to redevelop it. All the buildings except for the original row houses will be demolished. This announcement has sparked large protests within the residents of Cabrini Green. The once 15,000 large population of Cabrini Green has now recently become 5,000 with the demolition of the buildings. In its 64 year history, Cabrini Green started out as a place where poor people had hope. Through those times, residents have experienced the pain of family and friends losing their lives through violence and parents have seen their children fall into the tempting grasp of drugs. But through it all, the residents have grown up in a society ran by gangs. They have persevered in the most destitute of situations. Now Cabrini Green is being remade. The residents know that they have a tough few years ahead of them. And no matter what family history someone living in Cabrini Green has, no matter who they know have been killed, no matter what gang colors they wear or ever wore, all of them can agree, if you can survive Cabrini, you can survive anything.